Some facts to consider about the Israel-Palestine issue. One, the fighting between Jews and Arabs began long before the creation of the modern state of Israel, and there were culprits on both sides. Lehi, the Stern Gang, these were Jewish Palestinian Zionist terrorists. And Black Hand, these were Arab Muslim jihadist anti-Zionist Palestinian terrorists. Both sides of that pre-Israel conflict in British Mandatory Palestine were guilty of racist, ethnic cleansing, religious extremism, theocracy, and the mass murder of innocent civilians before the modern state of Israel existed. Two, the original borders dividing Jewish and Arab lands were largely decided upon by the British to keep these minorities of Jews and Arabs from killing each other, but were drawn in such a way as to force Arabs and Jews to cross each other's territory, to enter into other parts of their own territory. Most Arabs and Jews were trying to live in peace with each other. It was a minority on both sides doing most of the violence, including the violence against the British occupation. Three, Palestinian does not mean Arab. Palestine is the Roman name for the region that was later adopted by the British. Jews who lived in Palestine were also considered to be Palestinian before the modern state of Israel was created. Four, almost a third of Israeli citizens are Palestinian Arabs whose families chose Israeli citizenship when it was offered in the early days of Israel. Most of these Arab Israelis are Sunni Muslims. However, a sizable minority are Christians, and those Israeli citizen Arab Palestinian Christians make up about 80% of all the Christians in Israel. So when Christian Zionists blindly support one side or the other out of their Christian faith, they, can sh they, they really should consider the fact that most Israeli Christians are actually Palestinian Arabs. Five, besides the fact that Jews and Arabs are closely related ancient Middle Eastern tribes whose languages and religions are also closely related, there is the fact that genetic studies have repeatedly confirmed that many, if not most, Arab Palestinians are partially descended from the same Jews that most Jewish Israelis are partially descended from. In other words, Jews, Arabs, and even Turks, Copts, Amazigh, uh, Berber, Kurds, Romans, Greeks, and many others left their genetic mark on the people of Palestine. And many of the Arab Palestinians come from Jewish families who chose to convert to Islam or Christianity and intermarried with Arabs adopting the Arab culture and the Arab language. Six, the early Zionists were largely secular and many were atheists whose concerns stemmed more from the mistreatment of ethnic Jews globally than from anything to do with religion or ethnic supremacy. Unfortunately, in order to gain the support of the majority of Jews, these secular Zionists made the decision to allow Jewish religious fanatics into the leadership of the movement. Similarly, the Palestinian liberation movement has always had conflicts between different factions, some of whom just want a fair deal for the Palestinians, others who are secular Arab nationalists, and, of course, the Islamists and the Jihadists. 7. If it were not for the fact that Jerusalem is the holiest city on earth for religious Jews, while simultaneously being one of the holiest cities on earth for Christians, and the site of the third holiest mosque on earth for Muslims, the conflict would have been resolved long, long ago. 8. The often mentioned occupation refers to the disputed areas of Palestine, seized and largely controlled by Israel, while still officially considered to be parts of Palestine. After the Six-Day War, and not uh, to the entirety of Palestine or Israel. This is an important point that many around the world who take one side or the other seem to not understand at times. These are the areas in which Israeli settlers keep encroaching in an attempt to eventually officially annex these regions in Israel, as we see in the news today. 9. In Israel, many family law issues are actually handled by religious courts, not secular courts. Israel has Jewish, Sunni Muslim, Christian, Druze, and Baha'i courts. 
There are many Arab-Israeli politicians and Arab-Israeli-led political parties, including anti-Zionist parties. There are also anti-Zionist Jewish political movements in Israel, many of whom are led by uh, far-left organizations, including communists. 10. The first Palestinian suicide bombings were the work of the Popular Front for the Liberation of Palestine, a communist secular Palestinian organization founded and led by George Habash, who was a Christian communist Arab nationalist Palestinian. Later, the anti-Zionist Lebanese Shia Muslim Islamists of Hezbollah, backed by Iran, took up the practice under the influence of both the Popular Front for the Liberation of Palestine and the Islamic Republic of Iran. At a much later date, the practice was taken up by Sunni Muslim fanatics in Hamas and other smaller factions. 11. Hamas began as a Sunni Islamist movement providing charitable services to Palestinians, including hospitals. Some in Israel erroneously thought that if an ultra-conservative fascistic Islamist group dominated Palestine rather than a leftist semi-secular one like the Popular Front for the Liberation of Palestine, um, I'm sorry, like the uh, PLO, it would lead to a reduction in the global support for Palestinian causes, whether peaceful, political, humanitarian, military, or terrorist in nature. This is why Israel donated to Hamas charities in Hamas's early days. It was a huge miscalculation on Israel's part. 12. Palestinians in Israel and in the West Bank have far more freedom and human rights than those in Gaza, and this is largely because of the conflict between Hamas and Israel and because of Hamas being a uh, jihadist Islamist organization that wishes to impose Sharia law on the people of Gaza. 13. Both Israelis and Palestinians and in uh, Pal Excuse me. Both Israelis and Palestinians, as well as their respective supporters around the world, often lie and mislead intentionally about events in the region, including by deceptive editing of video and audio and cherry-picking of information. When we talk about the conflict, we must realize that it is not just Palestinians and Israelis of various uh, ethnic, religious, and political persuasions, including those on both sides who want justice and peace for both sides, but also those who staunchly take one side or the other, not out of concern for Palestinians or, or Israelis, but in support of religious and political agendas in which Palestinians and Israelis are mere pawns. In times prophecy-obsessed Christian Zionists, Islamists of various Muslim sects globally, Jewish supremacists, neo-Nazis, anti-Arab bigots, anti-Jewish bigots, various types of conspiracy theorists, most especially those who blame all the world's problems on Zionists or the far left or the far right, those who think Jews can do no wrong, those who think all Jews are evil, those who think all Arabs are Muslims, those who think all Muslims are terrorists, those who think no Muslims are terrorists, those who think Israel has no right to exist, those who think Palestinians don't actually exist as a people, those who lie about history on both sides, those Arab countries who treat Palestinian refugees as badly as Israel while using the issue for their own propaganda, those who make excuses for deliberate killing of innocent people on either side, those who think either side has no right to self-defense, those who want uh, the conflict to continue because it is not their blood being spilled, but it somehow serves their religious, political, or business interests, selling arms, for instance. 14. It would be better to be an Arab living in Israel than to be a Jew living in the West Bank or Gaza. 15. It would be better to be an Arab living in the West Bank or Israel than to be an Arab living in Gaza where Hamas will oppress you. And if Hamas doesn't shoot rockets at Israel, another jihadist faction will. And then Israel will retaliate against the civilian homes, hospitals, schools, and playgrounds where Hamas and others launch these rockets from. Hamas wants Israel to create more martyrs, which is why this is done. Israel is often stupid and callous enough to give Hamas exactly what they want, dead civilians. 16. It would be better to be an atheist in Israel than in the West Bank, 
and it would be better to be an atheist in the West Bank than in Gaza, where it would likely get you killed. 17. It would be better to be LGBTQ in Israel than in the West Bank, but it would be much, much better to be LGBTQ in the West Bank than in Gaza, where it's likely to get you killed. 18. It would be better to be a woman in Israel or the West Bank than to be a woman in Gaza, where women are treated as second-class citizens. 19. Hamas has always been trying to walk a line between being a Palestinian liberation movement and being an Arab nationalist movement and being a Sunni Islamist movement and being a Sunni jihadist movement and being a bunch of greedy, thieving gangsters. And they can't make up their mind which one they are. And they go back and forth between these different uh, sort of masks and roles. 20. Supporting Hamas is supporting the death, maiming, brainwashing, and oppression of moderate, liberal, libertarian, leftist, secular, democratic, pluralist, pro-peace, Christian, Druze, atheist, agnostic, uh, 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 Shia, uh, uh, LGBT, women, girls, pal any Palestinians that don't fit Hamas's agenda of what they think Palestinians should be. So please, if you support the Palestinians, don't support Hamas. Uh, and women are about half the population of every nation on earth. So never consider any organization to be revolutionary if it doesn't consider women to be equal to men. Thanks.